Well, folks, today I'm going to talk a little bit about doing time-lapse photography with the GoPro Hero 3. Here is my GoPro, and I mounted this to a tripod yesterday and went out and kind of set it in my garage and let it shoot out the garage door as I watched a storm sort of blow up over Mineral Springs Mountain where I live in Valdez, North Carolina. And so uh, what I did, I set this GoPro to shoot uh, the highest resolution photos it has, which are 12 megapixel images. I told it to shoot one every two seconds, and the images are 4,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels, so it's sort of a 4-3 aspect then, naturally. And uh, I wanted to put it into some 1080p video and do a time lapse and show how uh, the skies changed and everything, you know, as it, uh, you know, as the clouds changed and the winds blew the weather in. So let me jump straight into what I'm going to do. I have a Adobe Premiere Pro CC in the background here, and I've got the folder up here with all of the uh, photos in it. And the, the kind of the key to how, you know, what do you do with those photos? How do you make a video out of those photos? If you've never done this before, and those of you who've done it before, I know simple things, but let's uh, let's copy this uh, or let's let's explore this for the people who have not done it before. Uh, so you can see here, here's where I've, I have offloaded all of my photos from my Hero 3, and it's a sequence of photos. It's shot one every two seconds, and uh, I'm going to pull this out of the way for a minute. I have two screens actually here, but you're only seeing one. And so here's my uh, Premiere Pro project. And here is what I did. I imported all these. Now, before I imported any of these, here's the most important thing you're going to do if you're going to do a time sequence with photos. You're going to go up under uh, Edit Preferences, okay? Now, first of all, it should be said that I'm using the, the layout here in Premiere Pro CC is not what usually pops up on screen. I kind of, because I'm just used to using the older versions, I like to go to Window. I go to Workspace up here at the top, and I go to CS 5.5 Editing, which is the old kind of way that the screen looks. So it's the very same stuff on the screen, folks. It's just in different places than you might be used to seeing it. I like to have all my effects uh, library down here. I like to keep all my uh, uh, clips and things that I bring in here, and then I have my two windows, one over here that's the, the actual program and the one that I'm previewing over here. Here's my timeline. So the thing I did was I imported all these, but before I did that, I went to Edit, Preferences. I went to General. See General here? Come and click on this. And you want to make sure that right here where it says Still Image Default Duration, that you put one frame in it before you import any of these. So before I brought any of these in, I made sure I had my Still Image Default Duration set to one frame. That means that each picture is going to have be only one frame long when I pull it into a piece of video. So here we go. Uh, what I've done, I am, after I did that and said, yes, I want to bring it in one frame at a time, then I imported all my photos. So I have all my photos here, and I made a sequence. I called it Sequence 1. Uh, if you've never done a sequence before, let's just do that for the sake of the people who haven't done it. You go up uh, over here. We're going to put that sequence, of course, in this window. I'm going to say File, New Sequence. Of course, it's going to put it there anyway. But we'll call this one, uh, uh, let's say weather, W-E-A-T-H-E-R. Okay, and I have uh, 30 frames per second. My video is going to be 30 frames per second. I've chosen AVCHD, as, as, uh, and I went into the 1080p version here. And then I'm going to have a 1080p 30. And the reason I did that is because that's kind of what uh, YouTube likes. So I'm going to say okay. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to click on this whole sequence of photos here, right? I'm going to go to the very top, and I scrolled all the way to the top, so I'm getting the very first photo. I clicked on it. Now I'm going to pull down all the way to the bottom to the very last photo. And so here's the very last photo in that sequence. So I've got them all selected now, and I'm going to just grab any one of them and pull them down here onto the little video, the V1 in my timeline. All right, now, uh, if you're seeing this on the computer, uh, my computer screen, you're seeing that that looks like just a black line there. But if we grab down here on this little uh, thing that allows us to zoom in, this little uh, button here, this is our timeline uh, zoomer, actually. We can zoom in. We can see these are individual pictures. See that? So I'm zoomed all the way in. So there's a photo. Now, what are we seeing here? Well, we're seeing a photo that is much, much bigger than, uh, than, than my window here. This is 1920 by 1080 is what I'm seeing here. But I've got a picture 
that is, so I've seen 1920 by 1080, but I got a picture that is 4,000 pixels wide by 3,000 pixels tall. So I want to scale that image down so that I can see more of the weather and stuff that's going on here. I'm going to click on the first frame I've got. It could be any frame really, but I'm going to click on this first photo that I have. And I'm going to go up under motion up here. And I'm going to, uh, I, I flip down the little, the little arrow so that I've got the motion selected. And I'm going to go to scale. And uh, I just happen to know that about 70% is what I want. We could take this thing down. You can see, let's go down to like 40% and you'll see. Now you can see, look at this, you can see the, my garage, you can see the inside of my garage, and here is the, uh, those are the bounds of the door. I didn't, I wanted to be able to shoot out without rain getting on the lens of the camera. So I know I don't want it to be that wide, that gets the whole, everything that I've shot. I want it to go to about 70%, so I'm going to go to 70. So that's, that's more like what I want. Here's my F-150 sitting out in the parking lot. Here's where the weather's going to happen up here in the background. So I've, I've still got a whole lot of pixels outside the bounds of this. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm also going to slide this over. So you've got your two position buttons up here. It usually sets at 960 and 540 by default. So I'm going to grab the one over here that says 960. I'm going to slide this thing back soon. Okay, so I can see the door of my garage. I don't want that. I'm going to crop it right about there. I think I might want a little bit more sky. So I'm going to go down a little. I'm going to go to about... Uh, I've got it on 590 there. You know what? I am going to go back to 540, I think, because there is some uh, a little thing that I tried to do. Just kind of, I kind of went out and moved around one. <laughs> I tried to take one step every two seconds, so it looked almost like me normally walking around. My pug comes out here, so there's a little bit of silliness on here at some point. So I've got uh, my position set. Now, um, the reason I'm doing this, uh, I, yeah, I, I realize I've, I've jumped ahead a little bit in this, and I've looked at some of the frames, and I've seen well, what, what lies ahead here. Well, it's, it's, it's pretty dark. I can't see much of the details in my trees and stuff. What I want to do, I want to set up some effects that I can apply to every single frame of this before I go to render this video out. So actually, if I go to render this out right now, this, this would all create a, a sequence. And I'll show you how that goes, and it will look like a movie. But I want to make sure I'm positioned and I have my effects and my light and I'll set just the way I want it. I'm going to go over here into the effects area. I've got the effects tab clicked. And it did an auto save there. I'm going to click there and I'm going to say um, shadow highlight. Let's see. And you know what? First I'm going to do, uh, well, let's do uh, fast, fast color correction, F-A-S-T. I think what I'm going to do first, I'm going to saturate everything just a little bit. So I'm going to put a fast color corrector on this. And I'm still on this one, this one first frame here, right? And I know that I want my saturation uh, to be a little higher with this. I'm going to set it to about 150. And right now, that just saturated that one frame a good little bit. I, you know what? I'm also going to do a um, shadow highlight, S-H-A-D-O-W. I type that into the hole here. Shadow highlight comes up. I'm going to drag that over here also onto. So what did I, dra I dragged the uh, first one, the, um, uh, the the fast color corrector on it, and then I dragged the shadow highlight on. Now look what ha happens here. Now that's a little artificial looking. I don't want that to look like that. That's a little too much shadow highlight. I'm going to twirl down my fast color corrector up here. I'm going to close that up by clicking the little arrow there. Now that closed that up. Now I can see my shadow highlight. And I'm going to blend with original at about a 50% ratio. So now I have blended that down to about 50% shadow highlight is being applied to that. And that looks about right to me. I've got a little bit of color in here now that I don't think I had before. If I go here and turn the fast color corrector FX little button off, you can see that that I've got a little more saturation now than if I if I apply that. If I take the shadow highlight off, you can see how dark that is. So I'm going to have fast color corrector and shadow highlight. So now what I've done here is I've actually set up what I want to apply to every one of these future frames. I don't want to have to go back and do this to every frame. And I don't want to apply this, all these settings twice to that frame. So I'm going to do something kind of tricky here. I'm going to click on Shadow Highlight up here. I'm going to hold the Control button down on my PC. I'm not sure what that would be on the Mac. Probably Command. 
Then I'm going to click on Fast Color Corrector. So see, I have both of these selected now, and I'm going to click on Motion up top. So I have all three of these selected in the effects controls. Now I'm going to do a Control C. So I, I have this, this highlighted. I have selected Shadow Highlight, Fast Color Corrector, and Motion. All right. Now I'm going to do this. Here's my little trick. I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to delete this. Now uh, this, I won't reset this because it will not change. By, by what I'm getting ready to do is not going to affect that. It'll just apply the same thing to it. You can't affect, uh, you can't uh, do position twice, but you can do shadow highlight and color correction. So what I'm doing is a little bit of a trick here. I'm going to select everything, right? Everything on this timeline is now selected. Now I'm going to do a control V or paste. And what I just did, I just pasted what I had copied and deleted off of this uh, first frame to every other frame on there. So if I click somewhere down, else down the line, look, my position should be the same. See, I'm going to click down here further. My position is still the same. Everything's changed, but I have, I have now to every one of these frames, I have added a position and a color correction and a, uh, a, a shadow highlight effect. So now what I'm going to do, and, and I actually have already done it, so, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how I would do it. Once I have all this done, of course, I'm going to hit Control-S to save. And then I'm going to export this. So you make sure that your timeline is selected. I've got the yellow around the timeline here, right? I'm going to go File, Export, Media. And I'm going to, I'm going to do it as H.264 because that's the best codec uh, to use really for YouTube. And so I have H.264 selected. And I know I've got, a, I've got it set to 29.97 or roughly 30 frames per second. Uh, I did a shot, a photo every two seconds. So there's going to be uh, every minute, so two seconds into 30. So every 30 frames is going to equal a minute, isn't it? Every 30 frames is going to equal one minute. So every second that I have a video is going to equal one minute when we play this thing back. And uh, so I've, I've set use maximum render quality here. And I've got it set to 2997, 1920 by 1080. And I've got, uh, I want to set it better quality than this. So I'm going to set, I have to set my target bit rate at about 22 megs. And I'm going to set my maximum bit rate at about 28. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to export this piece of video. So I, it's going to be about 148 meg piece of video and I'll hit export. And then that uh, will export. And it'll take a while because it's having to take every individual frame. It's having to size it down. It's having to add some saturation to it and it's having to, uh, uh, do a shadow highlight on it. So I'm going to cancel this for now since I've already done it. I'll show you what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play right now. And so what you're seeing there are the clouds moving in over Mineral Springs Mountain. You're seeing, uh, you know, the uh, crepe myrtle trees moving. In just a minute here, you're going to see my wife. I think this is pretty cool over here where water comes in in front of the truck. In a minute, you're going to see my wife in normal speed walk over to our neighbor's house to uh, say hi for a minute. So she's going to go darting across there in real time, and she's going to look like the Flash. She's going to move so fast, it's going to look crazy. And then there's going to be me. I'm going to go out. I, I went out, and I tried to take one step every two seconds to see if I could make it look like a normal person walking around. I just, just did, that, was, that was Nikki just went shooting through it. No, wait a minute, there she goes. So she looks like the Flash. And you're going to have me coming out trying to take one step every two seconds here just in a minute. It's kind of silly, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like time lapse. So here I am, that was the pug for a second. And then I walked back in. That was actually only one step every two seconds. So there you go. Folks, that's how I do a time lapse. I hope this helps. I'm gonna do a second one where I show uh, the sun rising over a garden, how I do a little bit, maybe more color correction stuff. So watch that one as well. We'll cover a few more little details on how to do a time lapse video. Hope this helps. If you got any questions about anything, if I didn't cover something well, let me know. I like to do these videos and make sure that they're videos that people uh, understand and that really help. And sometimes you think you're, you're giving all the answers and you're really not because it's kind of hard to do a tutorial really. Um, let me know if I drop the ball in any way and I'll do something to kind of follow up and answer any questions if I missed anything. Thanks. Appreciate you guys. Happy uh, editing out there in the video world.